Hey everyone, and thanks for watching. Now the drawer we have here is something truly fascinating. This drawer is filled with the same species. And it's a moth called the, the Garden Tiger. Scientific name Arctiakaya. Here we see the name in Dutch. Grote Beer, it means Big Bear. That's different from Garden Tiger, isn't it? Now, it's a Palearctic species of moth. It's found in Russia, North America, Europe, and I think maybe even some parts of Asia. And what I really like about this moth is the variability. Let's take a close look. As you can see, each and every moth is different. That's because these moths have a huge, hugely variable pattern. While in general, all moths have some degree of variation. This is a rather extreme degree. And the pattern on their wings is almost like a fingerprint that's unique to each individual. And that's probably because there are a lot of genes that regulate the color pattern of this moth. Its color pattern is important because it warns predators not to eat them, for they are mildly toxic. They live in meadows and grassland that's a little bit scarce, that means a little bit poor in nutrients. And here the, the caterpillars feed on uh, low-growing herbs and shrubs like dandelion, stinging nettle, um, I forgot the English name for plantago, uh, bramble, raspberry, just all the, the small weeds, basically. But what's really interesting about this drawer, is some of the specimens here on the right, Take this specimen, for example. Compare it with the other specimens. And you'll see that the hind wings have these really bright spots. And they are rather orange instead of, well, red. I would almost call it, call it red orange. But they have a more yellow tint. And that's because this moth has so much variation. Strange uh, forms are more bound to happen because, as I said, there are probably a lot of genes that regulate their color pattern. And when these recessive genes stack up, this can happen in the wild rarely or in captivity when there's inbreeding. And some of these rare recessive traits are expressed and you get strange individuals. But the really, really odd one is here. And this is what we call the Arctiakaya form obscura. And obscura. Well, my Latin isn't that great, but I believe it literally means dark, the dark form. And as you can see, this, this moth is an almost entirely brown. And compared to all the other specimens here in the drawer, it's definitely a very rare genetic aberration. Now, I don't know if this happens in the wild. I think so, but it would be extremely rare. But most of the time, this happens in captivity, when you inbreed them for several generations causing very rare recessive traits to stack up and express themselves genetically resulting in strange forms like these the obscura form and it's even possible to breed this form if you're lucky enough to have it but it takes a lot of skill and patience to, uh, to select this form I think it's possible to do so by selecting the darkest individuals every generation till at some point you have all these genes that regulate their dark features and suddenly they're expressed resulting in almost brown moths. At least that's my theory, I'm not entirely sure, but this is something really rare. And here we see another really weird, weird aberration. What's even interesting is what we see here is the pupa, it's stuck to the moth. And as you can see, the wings are a little bit deformed. It means that very sadly, this very rare, rare aberration of the garden tiger, <laughs> it failed to hatch from the pupa. Isn't that a nightmare of most entomologists to have an extremely rare form that fails to hatch from its pupa? It happens, you know. It's all about luck. 
And here we see a form that simply has yellow hind wings instead of the red hind wings. Now this variation is less rare, but it's still a rarity, although it's not that big of an aberration because, um, well, I think the red pigments in the hind wings of Arctiacaia, they're basically created by uh, different chemicals, different pigments that together form a red pigment. But when there's a mistake in its metabolism, it's um, easy to turn them to turn yellow by accident. The same way that many green uh, green insects can have a mutation that makes them yellow, because uh, I believe the green stick insects and mantids is called a bile pigment, and this bile pigment is uh, basically um, well, if you look at the chemical process that forms the green pigment. At some point, it's yellow pigment that is metabolized into green pigment. And when this process fails, you end up with yellow instead of green. And it could work the same way in the Arctiacaia. But that's what I wanted to show you today. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Hello, everyone. And thank you for watching this week's episode of Drawer of the Week. My name is Bart Coppens, and I work with butterflies and moths. Both dead ones and live ones. Because I breed them in captivity. I study them, I film them, I photograph them, I research them, and I volunteer in a museum collection where I'm a conservator of the butterflies and moths. Now, Drawer of the Week is my weekly series where I show you one drawer with interesting specimens from a museum and give you some interesting facts about them. If you like it, like my video, subscribe to my channel, and consider joining my crowdfunding platform, Patreon, because only with your help my mission to educate the whole world about insects can be fulfilled. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next episode of this weekly series. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Drawer of the Week. This episode was voted by you on my crowdfunding platform Patreon, where my viewers can vote to decide what the next video will be about and what drawer I will show with what species. However, the vote turned out to be a stillmate between UV autofluorescence and Arctiacaia, uh, the garden tiger, including the rare obscura form. And because of it was a stillmate, I decided for myself which drawer would be the most interesting for this week. And that was the Arctiacaia, because I've been wanting to show you this rare aberration for quite a while. 